What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up a custom character in Unreal Engine 5. So this could be a character from anywhere, Mixamo or wherever. In this case we're going to be using a metahuman and we're going to be setting this character up from scratch and creating an animation blueprint from scratch so that it acts just like a character would in the third person template. Um, it's not super basic, but if you're a beginner to Unreal, I promise you this is going to be very easy to follow. I guarantee you, you will be able to replicate this in your project. So without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to create a new project using the third person template, leave everything's default, and I've just called this one my characters project. I'm going to hit create. And once the editor has fired up, I'm going to head on over to Quixel Bridge by clicking up here and Quixel Bridge and head on down to the MetaHumans tab. And I'm just going to add a MetaHuman that I've already downloaded. So if I scroll down here, I believe I already have Trey downloaded. If uh, if this doesn't say add and this isn't grayed out, you just need to download it. So you might want to click your character, select the quality you want to download it in, hit download, and then add to project. With that added, you'll find this MetaHumans folder down here. If you go into your MetaHumans folder and your MetaHumans blueprint, the first time you open this, it will prompt you to enable some missing plugins enable all missing plugins and then you'll be prompted to restart the editor so hit restart now alrighty the editor has restarted so i'm going to go ahead and open my metahumans blueprint i'm also going to find the third person folder and blueprints and open bp third person character and bp third person game mode next thing i'm going to do is go to my metahumans blueprint and in class settings I'm going to change the parent class to character. Now that the parent class is character, I can take the body and drag it onto mesh. I can select the root and hit delete. I'm going to hit compile and it's going to come up with this error here. You can click on target. Target here requires mesh, so grab mesh, drag it onto target. That should get rid of that error. And then now that this has been parented to character, this is a character blueprint, we can go to the BP third person game mode and change the default pawn class to our MetaHumans blueprint. That's all we need to do in here. We can compile, save and close that. The next thing we want to do is if you go to the viewport, you'll see that the character isn't lining up with the capsule component here. So what we want to do is select the body and here we're going to put in the value on the third argument here on location. We're going to put negative 96 and this will be negative 90 to get the rotation pointing the same direction as this arrow component here. You'll also notice here that the capsule component isn't big enough to fit our character. This is going to be our main thing that collides with the world and objects, etc. So we want to select the capsule component here. We want to change the capsule half height. Let's change it to 96. And we can change the capsule radius to about 50. Might need to come down a little bit lower than that. So, no, nah, actually that's fine the way it is. We can select LOD sync here and change the forced LOD to zero. This will stop the disappearing grooms problem because there is certain LODs of the grooms that just do not exist with the metahumans. So we're locking it to the lowest LOD here for now. For now, that's fine. Um, the next thing we want to do is head over to the third person blueprint. Um, and while we're here in the event graph, let's just grab everything here in the event graph and control click event begin play to unselect that and then control C to copy, go to our metahumans event graph, find some empty space, control V to paste 
and then we just want to grab event begin play and hair lod setup here and plug it into cast to player controller here so we're setting the um, the enhanced input and the um, input mapping context here on event begin play um, we are going to add a few more things to that later on so let's just create some more space there and the next thing we'll do is go to back to our BP third person character we're going to grab the camera boom here and right click and copy and on our capsule component we can right click and paste that spring arm notice that it's not called camera boom here it's just called spring arm that is actually what that type of component is called now we could just add one of these but the beauty of copy pasting it from the BP third person character here is it brings with it all the settings that were on there so this camera and the camera boom is going to act exactly how it does in the third person template so we're also going to right click on the follow camera and copy that and then that's going on the spring arm here that hasn't um, parented to the spring arm so just grab the camera and drag it onto spring arm there we go um, a couple of other things we want to do just to make this um, act as if it would in the third person template is copy some of the character movement settings here so if I compile and save this and hit play we will have a character we will have a camera but you'll see he's rotating with the camera and um, obviously there's no animations we're going to make an animation blueprint um, but he's rotating with the camera here now this might be fine if you wanted to implement sort of strafing if you're doing an over the shoulder third person game where you do want them facing towards the camera but for now we're just going to set this up to work exactly like it would in the um, third person template so we're going to select the we can just select the root and we can search for orient and you'll find this orient rotation to movement now that means the character will rotate in the whichever direction it's moving in we will also look for use controller rotation your this rotates the character wherever the camera's looking so these are the two settings that you will want to play with if you were as I said doing some over the shoulder sort of thing you would have used controller rotation your checked probably and you would um, also have this orient rotation to movement unchecked but you'll see the differences here if I compile and save and hit play now the camera isn't rotating the character and whichever direction he moves is the direction he's facing The other thing you want to keep in mind is that the character movement here um, that has been applied to this blueprint because we parented it to character um, in the class settings when we made this a character blueprint. This has basically just got all of the default settings here. So these are the default settings for character movement. Gravity scale is at one. Whereas if you, for example, look at the BP third person character, gravity scale is at 1.75. The acceleration's different. Um, there's a lot of things that are different. The max walk speed is different. The max walk speed should be 600 on here. So these kinds of things you want to play with to get the character acting uh, how you want it to in your game anyway. So I'm not going to go through copying these settings over to here. It's literally just a case of looking at what is different and then changing it over here in your uh, MetaHumans blueprint. Um, there might be a couple of things we'd like to change. Um, max step height. I wonder if that's any different. Nope, that's the same. A lot of this stuff is the same. I did notice that the gravity was different and the mass is different. So, for example, if you're worried about how high your character's jumping, um, mass in... Oh, this is, this is usually unchecked. Ah, oh, it's because it's in character movement. Sorry, you have to select the root. And if you search for mass, 
you'll see that the mass here is set on on the whole blueprint on the on the root as just about 210 kilograms whereas if you look in the root of the third person character it's 120 so that's one thing that you might want to just change let's set that as 120 um, but the gravity scale is also lower ah that's fine that's fine how it is so let's go on to animation and I'll show you how to animate this character and we will start by retargeting some animations from the third person blueprint um, if you go into your metahumans folder and then common and common you'll find this RTG metahuman IK retargeter we're going to select that and hit control D to duplicate and we're going to change this to RTG many to metahuman something like that something that differentiates it from that we're going to open up this RTG many to metahuman up in the top right here we're going to change source IK rig asset to IK mannequin and source preview mesh can stay as many we're going to change target IK rig asset actually can stay as IK metahuman this target preview mesh is going to be the preview of the body that your metahuman is using so if I select the body on my metahuman here you'll see over here the skeletal mesh asset is M tall normal weight body M tall normal weight body we want to use M tall normal weight body preview right here so you can see the preview of this mesh right here uh, one thing that is very important here in the latest version of Unreal Engine in 5.3 is that you select the root here and change translation mode to globally scaled. This is so that the root motion on the running animations uh, isn't broken when you duplicate and retarget the animation assets. So right now it's previewing um, the retargeted pose onto many, so that's why it pretty much lines up. But if you click up here and go to edit retarget pose, this is the pose that it's retargeting from. So we're just going to pose this mesh really quick. We want to click on character up here and bones, all hierarchy. That will make the skeleton appear. And then we can select the upper arm here and we can make sure rotation, rotation snapping is switched on and to five degrees. And we're going to select this bone here and we're going to rotate it back 15 degrees and out 10 degrees just like that so you can see this arm lines up a lot better now we can do the same on this side rotate it back 15 degrees and rotate it out 10 degrees and then you can see that the forearms and the hands don't line up great it doesn't matter too much, but just for the sake of, um, you know, making a bit more of an effort here. Oh, don't know what I've done there. Haven't selected the upper arm. Make sure you select the, sorry, the lower arm. Select the lower arm bone here, and we're going to rotate it out 10 degrees, um, sort of forward 10 degrees, and up and back 5 degrees. It's just more so the hands line up here. Uh, that's not quite right. That's undone that side. Sorry, let's start again on the lower arm here. So we're going to rotate it forward 10 degrees and out 5 degrees. Just like that. Same on this side. Rotate it forward 10 degrees and out 5 degrees. We're getting pretty close now. But if we look at the hands... Where are the hands sitting? It's a little bit low. If you s select here at the wrist, it's a bit tricky to get sometimes because with all this 
Oops, I accidentally rotated something there. Control Z to undo that. Trying to find the root of the hand here. Ah, here it is, right up near the wrist. Accidentally doing some rotation when I'm supposed to be just moving the camera here. Oh, it might be my mouse wheel. So let's select the wrist here, the hand, and I'd actually say that that's pretty good where it is. If we select character up here, bones and none, get rid of all the hierarchy of the skeleton. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. The fingers even line up pretty well. So if that's the same on this side, which it should be, that's absolutely fine, just like that. Alrighty, so that's all we need to do in here. We can save this and close this. And then what we want to do is find this characters folder, mannequins, animations. And here, because ABP Quinn is a child of ABP Manny, ABP Quinn has references to all of the animations that ABP Manny also uses. So we're going to duplicate and retarget ABP Quinn here. What we might do actually is in content, might create a new folder. We'll call it underscore main. And then in underscore main, create another folder, call it animations. And in animations, create one more folder, we'll call it third person anims just to keep this organized so that we know where these animations came from so back in characters mannequins animations we're going to right click on abp quinn and retarget animation assets duplicate and retarget animation assets slash blueprints select the retargeter that we created which is rtg many to metahuman and we're going to change the folder here so click change and find the folder we just created, main animations, third person anims, click OK and retarget. This is basically uh, retargeting all of the animations referenced in these animation blueprints onto our MetaHumans skeleton. So the first thing we can do straight away is select ABP Many and ABP Quinn and hit delete. We are not going to use those animation blueprints. We just duplicated those so that it duplicates all of the animations therein. If we uh, open these up, you'll see we've got a bunch of animations that have been retargeted onto our metahuman skeleton here. Which of these are going to come in handy just as a base setup. You go on to add other animations or create your own animations afterwards but we're going to use these in our animation blueprint, which we can create right now. We can just right click here and find animation, animation blueprint. Once again, you'll want to select the skeleton that your character is using. So for me, that's metahuman base skeleton and hit create. And I'm going to call this ABP underscore tray, which is the name of my metahuman. Actually, I might just drag this out to animation, the folder above, and just move here. And I'll just keep the animation blueprint here in the animation folder. We can open that up. And the very first thing we're gonna do is head over to the event graph. We're gonna set up some logic in here so you can right click and find event blueprint begin play. I'm also going to grab this try get porn owner and off of try get porn owner you can find an is valid this one plug in the execution pin here and also off try get porn owner we are going to cast to our character's blueprint and as the character's blueprint there we can promote that to a variable and we can just call that something like character reference so what this does is on begin play, it's uh, checking that there is a pawn owner. If there is a pawn owner casting to uh, the player character here, the um, MetaHumans blueprint, and then creating a variable, which is a reference to that character. So instead of every time the uh, animations update, 
we instead of casting 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 over to this character we just cast once on event blueprint begin play and create a reference to that character um, also off this character here we can get the character movement um, it might you might have to scroll down to the bottom here get character movement and then we can also promote that to a variable and just leave it as character movement plug that in there now down here we're going to get our character reference and once again we're going to check is valid plug in the execution pin to this event blueprint update animation and on the is valid here we're going to find a sequence and we're going to add a bunch of pins to this sequence because this is where our, our animation blueprint is going to um, call over to our character and grab a set of variables which it will then use to dictate which animations to play. Um, so the first one we can get is if we just get our character movement, get character movement, and then is falling. This is kind of a built-in function in the character movement that checks whether the character is in the air. Very useful in animation. So we can promote that to a variable, call that is falling, question mark. We can plug that into the first pin there. Then we can get our character reference here and get velocity. You might have to scroll down to the bottom, get velocity, and then promote that to a variable, call it velocity. Also off of the get velocity, we can get the vector, whoops, vector length x, y, promote this to a variable and call it ground speed. So it's just checking the vector length of our character's velocity on the x and y axes to get its speed relative to the ground. We can also drag off of the character reference here and get rotation whoops, get rotation, no sorry, get actor rotation, get actor rotation right here. And then off of get actor rotation, we can calculate direction. It'll be this one here, one that says target is anim instance. Plug in the velocity to the velocity up here, and you're gonna promote this to a variable and call it direction. Plug that into the next execution pin. This is getting a little bit cluttered here, but it doesn't matter too much as long as, like personally, I just like to keep these set variables in line here. So this will be my list of variables right here, and then you can look back at how they're calculated. Um, the very last thing we want to do here is a should move Boolean. Um, if we just get the character movement and then uh, what we can do off of that is um, get the current acceleration. We can check if the current acceleration is not equal to zero and if our ground speed is greater than three, then this we can promote to a variable and call that should move question mark. This is just a Boolean that will allow us to transition from an idle animation into a walk and run animation. So it's just making sure that there isn't some small amount of movement triggering a walk or run animation. We want um, the acceleration to be greater than zero and the ground speed to be more than three. And plug this into the last execution pin here. We don't need this one for now. And that's it. This is all we need to set up 
our anim graph to play the basic animations of walking and running and jumping and falling and so on and so forth so let's go ahead and do that right now head on over to the animation graph and I'm going to right click up here in some empty space and type in state machine and we're going to add a new state machine here we can click on that and we can call that locomotion while we're here we're also going to drag off of there and cache this so new save cached pose this is basically and we can click on that and we can also call that locomotion this is basically just saving this pose output here into a cache so then we can use it somewhere else um, this is a good practice in certain uh, situations here you'll you'll see why in a moment we can go into our locomotion here and on entry we can add a state and we'll call it idle and in idle what we can do is grab our retargeted idle pose there's two here there's mf for the female and there's mm for the male i'm just going to grab the male idle pose here and plug it in if you want to see the differences you can open them up they're they're slightly different and make sure with mm idle selected you check loop animation over here so this animation is just going to loop um, we can back out to locomotion and off of idle we can add another state and we'll call it walk slash run and just before we add the animations here in walk run i'm going to drag off of the edge here and back to idle and these are our transitions so these are the rules that need to be satisfied in order to transition to another state and the only rule we need to trans uh, transition into walk and run is should move so we can grab should move and plug it in there and if we go back out to locomotion and the transition rule to go back to idle will just be should not move so grab should move find a not boolean plug that in that's all we need to do there so we can back out to locomotion and go into walk run here and then you'll see these blend spaces here which we retargeted we can just grab blend space mm walk run plug that in there and grab our ground speed variable plug that in there and that's all we need to do there if we go back out to our anim graph and we just right click here and find locomotion use cached pose locomotion and plug this into the result here we can compile and save and now our character oh, he's not animated because we haven't selected the animation blueprint yet so in the character's blueprint select body and over here animation mode should be on use animation blueprint and the anim class will be the animation blueprint that you've created which for me is ABP tray and our character is animated we compile and save that and hit play there we go he's got his idle animation he's got his walking and his running but if we jump nothing happens so we also need to add jumping animations alrighty in the animation blueprint what we're actually going to do is we're going to delete this and we're going to just add another state machine here and we're going to call it main states and instead of just connecting it straight to this output pose here we're also going to get a default slot slot default slot this is going to be the default slot into which any uh, animation montages are uh, overlaid onto onto the character so if you're ever going to use animation montages which you probably are you're gonna want one of these slot default slots here in main states here we're going to go in here and off of entry we're going to um, add a state and we'll call it locomotion locomotion just make sure I spelt that right and in locomotion we are just going to find our cached pose locomotion and plug that in there 
So we can back out to main states. And what we can do as a bit of a cheat sheet is just open up our third person character uh, animation blueprint. So if you open the BP third person character and then click on the mesh, you'll see ABP Quinn is the one it's using over here. You can browse to that and open that up and then head on over to, ah, oh, this is a child of ABP Manny. So we actually want to open up ABP Manny and the anim graph. And if we go into main states, you'll see the setup that we have here. Now, these are using uh, what are called state aliases. So two falling here and two land are actually state aliases. They are basically a state, but instead of having a transition to it, uh, what it's got is just over here a list of the other states and you can check the ones that you want uh, to be able to transition to that one from if that makes any sense. So this one has locomotion and land checked. That means locomotion and land can both transition to this state alias or one of the states that it's connected to as long as those conditions are met. So it's just a neater way of organizing this instead of dragging that onto there, onto here or here, and this one also onto here and here, we've just created this state alias. So we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, we can create a state alias, call it to falling, and we will also create a state here called land. Uh, another state alias here called to land. Whoops. And we're also going to uh, create states called jump and fall loop. So up here we've got jump. Over here we've got fall loop and jump into fall loop. And we just want to make sure that these state aliases have the right states checked. So in two falling we want locomotion and land um, because you're either on the ground walking or maybe you just landed and then you fall off a ledge or something. Uh, so you want to be able to transition into these from locomotion or land. And to land, we want to be able to transition into that from jump or fall loop. And I'll just double check that that's, yep, jump and fall loop. All good. So we want to add the animations here and the transition rules, okay? So let's start with jump. Jump is going to be two conditions. So we're going to get an and boolean. And the conditions are going to be is falling. Don't let this name um, sort of misguide you, by the way. Is falling just means is in the air. So you could call that is in air if you like, but uh, we just call it is falling. We also want to get the velocity and we want to split the struct pin here. And we want to check if the velocity on the Z axis is greater than a certain amount. Uh, let's just check what they use in ABP many. So this transition here is falling velocity Z greater than 100. So let's use the same greater than 100 and that is our transition rule to jump. Our transition rule to the fall loop will just be is falling and we'll just double check that that's correct is falling yep and jump to fall loop will be is not falling I believe oh, that's not even set up that's strange Ah, oh, that's an automatic transition, that's why. Um, so if I back out here and I just select this transition, 
you'll see this automatic rule based on sequence player in state. This basically means once the jump animation is completed, it can transition into fall loop. Um, and if is um, this is not falling down here. So, sorry, this might be a bit confusing for you. Jump to fall loop will be an automatic transmission uh, transition, automatic rule based on sequence, blah, blah, blah. Is falling, is falling, and Z velocity greater than 100, automatic. So these transitions are all done. Let's just add the animations while we're up here. So this will be MM jump. Fall loop will be MM fall loop. And as the name suggests, this one needs to loop in case we're falling, falling, falling. So make sure you check loop animation over here. And that's all this top section set up. Now to land, the state alias transitions to land from jump or fall loop, which as you know, these involve is falling. So to land, we just want this transition rule to be is not falling. Not boolean. So if we're not falling anymore, we can transition into land. And land is actually an additive uh, animation. So mm land here will need to be applied as an additive. I'm not sure if it will be the base or the additive, um, probably the additive I'm guessing. And what we're going to add it to is the locomotion. So use cached pose locomotion. Plug that in. And from land to locomotion will be an automatic transition. So automatic rule based on sequence, blah, 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 blah. And let's just double check that that is correct. Uh, should move. Should move is on there as well. I'm not exactly sure why um, or how to add. There we go. We just drag again to create two. So we've got the automatic rule and should move. Um, I, I don't remember seeing that. So I can't really explain to you why that is the case. Um, but there it is. But if we just control, if we compile and save and hit play, you'll see we've got the walking and running and we've got the jumping animation and the falling animation. He's going straight into the falling animation. And the reason is, ah, this was the problem guys. We have to set the priority order here. So the priority order on this one is going to be two. So that if we're in the air, we probably jumped. So the priority order needs to be two on here. And I'll just double check that that's correct. Priority order one on jump, priority order two on falling. That was the error, sorry about that. Now he's doing the jump animation and transitioning to the falling animation afterwards. Nice. Uh, you'll notice one more mistake here with the beard not uh, following the mesh properly. Uh, it's a problem with the binding assets, uh, even in UE version 5.3. So let's fix that real quick. Uh, what we're going to do is open up our MetaHumans blueprint. And this section here that has event begin play, we're going to just drag that down to the bottom and make a bit more space here. Also going to grab everything and move it away from event begin play. And off event begin play, we can add a sequence. Whoops, my mouse wheel's playing around here. Sorry about that. Uh, off of the sequence, what we're going to do is we're going to then pull out all of these groom assets here, pull them all out one by one, like so. Eyebrows, hair, and beard. 
and we are going to set the binding asset set binding asset you can duplicate this a few times and yeah, might just duplicate all three of those to save some time plug in all of the targets here and the execution pins and the first one into the next execution pin on the sequence there and just to make this foolproof to select the binding asset here what we're going to do is select the mustache and down here in the details panel we're going to find the binding asset and browse to that and then with that selected we're going to go back into our character's blueprint and click this use asset browser selection to use the, mu the mustache uh, binding asset. Now that this is selected here in the details panel we're actually going to clear that from the details panel of the actual mustache because we're setting this now on event begin play and we're going to do that for all of these so eyelashes browse to the asset, go back to the blueprint, set it here, and then clear it over here. And for the fuzz, browse to the asset, back to the blueprint, set it here, and then clear it here. So on and so forth. Uno memento por favor. and beard is the last one set it here clear it here and that's it guys we have imported a metahuman used it to oh the beard is not following along there what's going on Sorry about that guys, that was just a matter of uh, closing the editor and reopening it. I uh, don't know why that happens, just a little bug happens sometimes. Uh, there we have it guys, we have a metahuman imported and ready to use as our player character with its own animation blueprint set up from scratch. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, Please hit like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.